Okay, if you remember from last time, this is uh, where we left off with uh, the first few steps of the process of going from AutoCAD to SketchUp. So we brought in all the walls and flat work and paving and uh, building outlines, and we worked using either the plugins or manual method to close this into surfaces. And also, if you remember, uh, I recommended that the amphitheater area, because of its complexity, <clears throat> it would be better to not uh, keep that as part of this uh, two-dimensional version because in, in just a minute I'm going to we're going to I'm going to show you how to drape this onto a terrain model and we don't really need this on there and you'll see why in a little bit. So I've pulled that off separately, grouped it, and all the lines that were if you brought it in originally you can still select all those elements, group them, move them up, and then fill this back in so it's just a solid surface. <clears throat> okay, the next step that we're going to do is actually create the terrain model. And for this, because I have a plugin that simplifies it, I've provided that simplified terrain model, but I'll, I'll walk you through that same process before we substitute that one in. So I'm gonna to go to import. I'm gonna switch my file types to AutoCAD and I do have the contours. And remember, we're always gonna keep preserved drawing origin checked, make sure everything lines up. So the contours are going to come in. If I zoom to extents here, you can see them up above and they have their elevations. So I'm going to explode those just to turn them into individual lines. And to use the terrain from contours, we just select those. Make sure your sandbox tools, and the first one up here is from contours. And it doesn't take too long to run through <coughs> and create that. Now I want to take a closer look at this and show you why I like to use the other plugin and why I'm providing a different version of this terrain model. So first of all, I'm going to select all that shift deselect the terrain model and just delete the contours. We don't really need to have those anymore. And what you'll notice is that there are some kind of strange anomalies going on and you can see that better if I go to view and turn on hidden geometry. So in this case because the original drawing had these contours with nice clean arcs it was drawn that way in the version we provided to you as a template. But arcs and terrain models actually cause a lot of problems. You can see there's multiple overlapping surfaces here and there's lots of intersections. It would have been better for me to go into AutoCAD <clears throat> and convert this arc to a line segment within the polyline. Then it would just have one single line across here and all this complexity would be gone. So even if you're going to use the standard terrain, <clears throat> you definitely want to make sure that there are no arcs in your contour lines when you import them from AutoCAD. It just adds a lot of unnecessary complexity. But you also notice because it triangulates to contour points, there's a lot of lines going into small, very small areas. So trying to take the next step that we're going to do to drape this 2D site plan onto the train, that creates a lot of issues for closed surfaces on that. And so what I'm going to do actually is select this and just delete that. Uh, <clears throat> the contours, well, actually, I think I can show you in here. Let's undo that. If I hide my hidden geometry <clears throat> and select this, I can go to the plugins and uh, it's Valley Architects Instant Terrain, make terrain over objects. I can pick the module that I want, so I'm going to use 20. Okay, so the license isn't running. I think I put it on my laptop. So uh, instead of taking the time to re, uh, reboot it on this machine, I'll just bring it out of the train. Basically, that's what you do. It creates a copy of this. Then you can delete the original, and that's where we go back to import, change to SketchUp files. <clears throat> and there's my mesh. <clears throat> now, in my case, I know this would have lined up, but since I wasn't sure if our models were exactly the same, I added this little piece down here. So now I'm just going to place it, snap that to the corner, and now I know that lines up exactly with my terrain underneath. So I'm going to open that group, select that piece, and delete it. <clears throat> and now I've got the same basic terrain model, but when we look at the hidden geometry, you can see it's much simplified. It's just a series of triangulate, triangulated squares. It's nice and smooth. It's easy to use the art, art, artisan tools on it. Uh, so if we wanted to make some changes to that, we could. Uh, so much better to work with. So I highly recommend getting that plug in yourself for $7, uh, an annual subscription. It's, uh, it's well worth the money to uh, simplify things. Now to do the, the contour draping process, technically the, the contour or the landform, the terrain model and the uh, 
flat work that we've created can be above or below. It doesn't matter. But for the sake of making sure that it's a little easier to uh, work with after the fact, I'm just going to move the flat work <clears throat> up into the air so it's above. Okay, so now we have our closed surfaces. We've kept the amphitheater separate and our terrain. So to drape that, I just want to go up. I'm going to make sure I select that, but not the amphitheater. You choose the drape tool, which is the icon with the little circle on it. And then just hold it over the landform for a second. Move the mouse until you see this red icon that's saying, okay. And if you look down below, it says select the mesh on which you wish to drape. Now I'm going to click there and then I'm going to wait. And I think I mentioned this in class. This, depending on the complexity of your design and the complexity of the terrain model, this can take a while. So you can see down here at the progress bar, it's at 54%. And we're just going to have to sit here and wait for it. You don't want to interrupt this. Uh, I've had a really complex terrain model on a slower computer take 45 minutes. In fact, that's how I discovered that SketchUp always does this. It just takes a long time. I was impatient. I kept canceling it out, trying to click. It'll cause SketchUp to crash and not respond. And uh, I kept trying and trying until one day I started. I think I got a phone call or something. or I went out of my office. And when I came back, <clears throat> it had been long enough that it had actually finished. So you do just have to let it run through its paces. Now, after this is done, we'll keep this flat work intact up here uh, because that's how we can start making walls, as I showed the other day in class, and bringing those down. So that's a pretty simple process. But then what we need to do is come in here and make sure it's going to explode this so I don't have to keep entering the group. Uh, and make sure that everything is separated the way it was before. And if I come in here and find something that isn't, then I have to clean that up. So I'm a little suspect right here. You can see that there's something going on there. And if you're going to troubleshoot this, you really want to turn your hidden geometry on because that's the only way you can tell where these hidden lines go across. And often uh, that's kind of where the problem is. So sometimes I'll just start by going to these intersections and isolating that. So in this case, I found a piece for whatever reason <clears throat> wasn't connected. And then I can go back through and erase these lines <clears throat> and see if that works. And then I usually turn the hidden geometry back off. Now that one actually probably didn't have to fix because it was still enclosed in this area. It went under the wall, but it didn't come through the other side. And the wall, once I place the 3D wall on here, it's going to hide it anyway. So don't, you don't have to take the time to fix things that really don't matter. But in this case, it does matter. I've got uh, three separate areas, but they're selecting as one. So again, for whatever reason, pretty sure I fixed this on the original version, but it didn't connect to there. So you can just come in and extend them. And that one is also off at the other end. Sometimes you just have to work it around because it's trying to snap to the face uh, and it's not until you get in close enough. It's just not going to let go of that face. There we go. So now I have those as three objects. Again, it's I've done this a couple times, so I know <clears throat> why that segment was there. That segment was there because there was a separate little triangle cutting across for the train model. And uh, so you do want to make sure you turn that on because if you try and draw a line you know, across here, you can see it kind of disappears right there because that's a triangulated surface. And if I had my hidden lines off, I wouldn't be able to see that. And so if you're trying to fix something and you're crossing one of these lines, it's simply not going to work. So you have to kind of go back and forth with this and just toggle it off and on. And again, if there are extra lines down here, here's an example where I don't really need this surface in here, so I can just get rid of those lines. I'm not sure what happened here, I'm going to go in and delete these pieces. And this, I could, it looks like it's just misaligned. So this is another case where I'm probably just going to take that. And it's not going to let me move it. Okay. Let's turn the hidden geometry on, make sure. That might help me a little bit. Okay. So I can't move that one. Oh, now I'm moving it. There we go. 
and I'm just going to line that up and snap it to the face. So I got rid of those extra lines. Again, sometimes you get these anomalies. This is the edge of the wall here. I don't really need this or this. And when I delete that, you can see it left a little bit of a gap there. But when I click that endpoint, it cleans that up. So again, if you've done your job well on the first part, you shouldn't have to do an awful lot of cleanup down here. Again, I've got a couple little pieces I noticed, and this is kind of hanging out. Again, the arc is causing a little bit of that problem, but I just snapped it back into place. <clears throat> the key thing is you want to make sure that you can start filling these areas with different colors and that they don't leak out into the other areas. So you can see here that still looks perfect there. I've got something going on here, and when I click on it, that is leaking out into there. So again, if I zoom in, see I've got a little misalignment. If I can't, again, if I can't move it and I have a line going through there, I'll just erase that and reconnect from that point to that point. Uh, and I've got the same thing here. I can try to move that. If I can connect it, that's great. Again, I don't really want to fill that in with a short line segment. I'd rather, so I'd rather move it or delete it and redraw the whole line across. So again, if I move in here, you can see I've got these two corners. Now, if I can move this, escape out, and snap that right to there, that might solve my problem. It's still showing that's connected though. So if it's doing that, I just delete this line. I know exactly I have to draw from here to here. And now that's separated those pieces. So same, same kind of process, something's going on down here. With the move tool, try moving the little part to the big part there. It's not working. Try moving this one over. Again, I moved it over. It's still not solving the problem, so I'm just going to delete that segment and fix that in there. And now I've got that separated into those areas. So that's really the process. Once you've uh, draped the train, you want to go through and you can, you know, you can start doing selections or if you want to get the paint bucket. And I think I mentioned the other day, if we just start with, with some colors, uh, we're going to talk about projected textures next time and show you how that works. But at least now, if I want to come in here and just find a, a green color for areas that are going to be lawn, then I can start color coding this and maybe I get a different one for areas that are going to be uh, planting beds. That area, that area, that area. So anything that you want to keep a unique color and maybe this, I'm not sure whether these are, I think this is probably lawn so I can hold the alt key, pick that up. But it's really just a matter of, this is a, a rain garden here. So I'm just trying to go through, make sure everything's closed and that I put unique textures on all the patterns. And as long as they stay intact, now you can see here, I've got a little problem, right? That's one thing that pops it up right away. So let's go in here and see what's going on. And again, that's a case where I better turn my hidden geometry on because there's probably something cutting through there. And so I can see there's two pieces in here and I don't really need two pieces because there's no triangulation going across there. So I'm just going to delete those two pieces, put one in there. And now if I go back to my hidden geometry, I think I can actually select that separately. So if I wanted to get my paint bucket, pick up a gray for the walkway, now I can <clears throat> start filling in these areas with different patterns to represent different paving materials in different directions. Again, first round, don't just make colors unique. Don't really worry about whether they're, uh, don't worry about whether they're the exact color you want to use. All right, so somehow when I did this, I ended up uh, losing a piece of that terrain. So the question is, how did I do that and what happened? So I can close that. Now, the thing is that that's probably not going to fill back in. I don't know whether I accidentally deleted something in my hurry. So let's back up and see what I did. Okay, so it had something to do with this, which is a little strange, but uh, let's turn our hidden geometry back on and 
fix that again. So I'm going to erase that. Everything's still intact there. Let's see if I can reconnect that. Okay. That looks fine. I, maybe I hit the delete key or something. Not sure what happened there, but uh, anyway, it's back the way it was, so everything's intact. Okay, so that's the, that's kind of that next step. Create the train model, drape it on the surface, double check to make sure everything is closing. And uh, if you see something like this that's leaking, there's clearly a couple more pieces there that uh, I need to clean up. So I can come in here, turn my hidden geometry back on. And again, that's one piece straight across there. So I'm going to just replace that. Same thing with this. I've got these two lines. That's probably why it's not working there and I can see this one isn't quite touching so I'm going to try and move that one over there okay so now let's see if I pick up my paint here I think that's a planting bed let's just say this is a different color paving I don't know if that actually is I think that might be the same as that that's a darker color <clears throat> okay, so you can start picking up patterns. And again, start with basic colors first, and then we can go and, and deal with the, uh, that may actually be a different color just because it's a ramp coming down to the sidewalk. Um, but that's that's the next step. And then uh, the <clears throat> I think I'm going to end this, this one uh, video here. And in the next video, I'll talk to you a little bit about, you can see one of the issues we have with the train because of the walls in here sidewalk really doesn't look too good right it's averaging the slope all the way down to here because it doesn't really understand there's a wall that drops straight down there but we can fix that easy there's a little issue there there's a little issue on this side and then there's the same kind of issue over here um, with the building uh, but i'll do a different uh, separate tutorial to show you how we can kind of fix this and clean it up again this is a pretty tall wall the building doesn't slope up on this side stays pretty flat and then it goes up vertically so that's the process for this step. Bring in your terrain, line it up, move the uh, flat work above the terrain, select it, use the drape tool, and then once it's draped, start filling colors in. And uh, where you see something leak out, figure out where that edge is and, and fix that. And if you've done your job well up above, you shouldn't have that many things to, uh, to correct on here.